Okay. Cyber info session. Let's get started. All right. So hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this info session. My name is Mark Davis, and I'm on the leadership team here at Fullstack. And I run Fullstack Cyber Bootcamp. Uh, obviously, what we're here to talk about today. Um, if you want to get in touch with me after the info session, um, you can find me on Twitter at Digitize My Life, and my DMs are open. So, um, what we're going to talk about in this talk uh, is first, I want to give you a quick introduction to Fullstack Academy. Um, then we'll start talking about Full Stack Cyber Bootcamp. Uh, I want to begin telling that story by talking about the big picture, uh, what's happening in cyberspace, and then talk about why this is creating uh, such a huge opportunity for people who are going into this particular field. Then I want to give an overview of the program, and then we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the curriculum. Uh, and then we'll talk about next steps if you want to continue exploring this program. Um, if you have uh, any questions as we go, just go ahead and post them in the chat. And then we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. We'll just go through all the, all the questions at the end, but post them as we go here. Um, so, uh, oh, by the way, don't worry about taking uh, notes. We're going to email you actually a replay video of this uh, talk um, tomorrow. So you'll get it sent to the same email address you use to register for the talk. So why don't we go ahead and get started um, now. Um, before we dive in, you know, if um, you're, you are already considering a career in cybersecurity, then you may have more questions than answers at this point. So, for example, where would I start? Uh, what would I need to learn? Uh, how hard would it be to learn that stuff? Would I actually like the day-to-day -day work? What would my career path look like? Uh, how much money would I make? That's an important consideration for any uh, career paths that you're uh, looking at. Um, and so we'll answer those questions uh, as well as some more as we go through the, the talk here. So quick introduction to Full Stack Academy, if you're not familiar with us. Uh, we were born in YAC in 2013, it's the same accelerator program that uh, Airbnb started there, Dropbox, uh, and a few other companies you may have heard of. We've got campuses in New York City, Chicago, and online. Actually, I should update the slide. We've also got a new campus in California. Um, and in Florida as well. We're actually the top ranked coding bootcamp in the US. Now, obviously here today, we're, we're here today to talk about cybersecurity, but we, we are the top ranked coding bootcamp in the United States. And matter of fact, if you Google um, student reviews, you'll find that um, on average, we, we get about 4.9 out of five stars from our students, which are really important to us. And we work hard for those, uh, those reviews every, every day. Um, now, one thing we like to say here is we're a little bit crazy about outcomes. And by outcomes, we mean getting hired after you finish uh, full stack. And so when you look at the coding side, and you look at some of the companies uh, where our graduates work, you see some companies here, there's a lot uh, more. Um, and some of these companies, for example, Google um, have hired more than 25 of our grads, actually quite a few uh, companies. So um, just a little bit of history, um, in 2013, we did our first cohort of the coding bootcamp. In 2016, we launched something called the Grace Hopper program, which is actually the first uh, all women's coding bootcamp uh, right here in New York City, uh, and the first in the country to offer a deferred tuition model, which has become more common uh, in the space now. And this year, we partnered with New York City. Actually, we, we've been working on it for a couple of years, but it launched this year um, to build and launch Full Stack Cyber Bootcamp, which, of course, we'll be, we'll be talking about. Uh, well, now, why don't we start talking about it now? Um, so um, just to sort of set the stage here, let's talk about the big picture, what's happening in cyberspace. And actually, um, for these next three slides, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to pull them up and I'm going to just read them aloud um, because I think that's the quickest, easiest way to set the stage for the story we're about to, we're about to tell. So the headline is, it's pretty bad out there. You read it in the news every day. Another huge hack or data breach. The fact is there's a war being waged in cyberspace right now, and the white hats, uh, the good guys, are losing to the black hats. And this is happening on a massive scale as cybercrime will co cost the world six trillion annually. Six trillion, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that number, uh, within two years. We need more white hats. Companies and governments are struggling to keep pace with the dramatic rise in cybercrime. 
they're trying to hire people with cyber skills, but there is a critical shortage. It's a critical, it's an emergency, it's a national emergency. Um, shortage of cyber talent in the US and around the world. In fact, there will be 3.5 million um, open cyber jobs within the next two years. Help make a difference. So, so what does this mean to you? That there's an opportunity to get onto the cyber battlefield, for lack of a better word, as a white hat hacker and really make a difference. All right, so that's the big picture. Now, why is this creating such an opportunity for people going into this field? Well, it really comes down to supply and demand, right? Basic economics, okay? So if you look at um, the open jobs now, 3 million open jobs, you can see roughly where they're distributed, about 500,000 in the US, open jobs right now. So it's a big number and it's getting bigger. bigger. Uh, we just saw the number of 3.5 million by 2021. And what this is, means is that people who enter the field tend to get paid more than the average entry level salary in other fields. So according to CyberSeek, which is a nonprofit organization that aggregates salary related data in uh, cybersecurity, the average salary for an entry level security analyst is $85,000 once you have the skills, right? So not only is it a relatively high entry level salary, but the t salary tends to go up uh, over time um, as you as people progress through their uh, career. So obviously every journey is different, but for example, if you start, if one starts uh, as a, a security analyst at 85K in year one, maybe year two, they become a penetration tester, which I'll describe a little bit later, $102,000. Year three, cybersecurity engineer, 108,000. These are average numbers from CyberSeq. Year four, cybersecurity architect, 129K. Uh, so what's actually interesting about when I show these numbers to people, I get different reactions based on who the people are, right? So if the people are not in cybersecurity, um, they will tend to look at these numbers and go, oh, those are pretty high salaries in cybersecurity. But when I show them to people who have been in cybersecurity for three, five, seven, ten 10 years, whatever, they'll look at these numbers and they will feel low uh, to them because the uh, it's not uncommon for people to have, uh, you know, uh, to make over $200,000 in this field. Here's a couple other numbers I'll throw out there. Cybersecurity professionals have an average salary that's three times higher than the national average. And the demand for cybersecurity experts is growing 12 times faster than the current US job market, making cyber one of the most highly sought after careers in the country. But first you need to train grasshopper, okay? Um, so, so if you think about um, how long will it take you to get the required skills? Um, well, there's different ways you can do it. And we'll talk about what the required skills are a little bit later in this, in this talk, but just at a very high level. Um, for example, you could go and get a university undergraduate degree in cybersecurity, which would take you about four years. Maybe you already have your undergraduate degree and you want to do a master's in cybersecurity, which would be about two years. Um, you could self-study, which would take 12 to 18 months. It's non-trivial, it's possible, it's difficult though. Um, or you can do a cybersecurity boot camp. Um, if you want to do a full-time boot camp, it's usually about three months. Uh, Part-time boot camp, usually about six to nine months. And what we're going to be doing in this talk is we're going to be focusing in on the boot camp method of learning. All right, so let me give you a quick overview of full stack cyber boot camp. First of all, the mission, what we're trying to do. We teach motivated students deep foundational skills that are in high demand from employers in New York City and around the world. When our students graduate, we help them land their first job and begin a fast growing career in cybersecurity where they love what they do every day and feel good about doing something positive for the world. So the basic premise of the program is you go from cybersecurity novice, from beginner, um, to an in-demand cybersecurity professional in 17 weeks. And so I'll just give you the thumbnail sketch of what this journey looks like before we go into deeper detail. Um, so first is you take a free six hour online course uh, called Hacking 101 where you find out what it's really like to work in cybersecurity and if this is a, a field, uh, a good fit for you, if this field's a good fit for you. Um, then when you get, you uh, apply to get into the program, if you get accepted, the first thing you do is you take a course called Foundations, which is an online course you take at home. It's about 25 hours per week for four weeks, so about 100 hours of uh, prep material. Then you come into the actual boot camp on campus, which is about 13 weeks. Actually, it is 13 weeks. Um, and then you go into something called flight. So this is a period after you graduate. Uh, so let's say it's one, two, three months, however long that period is, um, where you're getting hired, right? And, and during this period of time, you're basically doing two things. First is you're spending about half 
your time on job search, you know, job search related stuff, interviews and such. And then the other half of your time, you're doing continuous learning. So you're going deeper into the, the material um, that you learned into the boot camp. And you'll start zooming in on things that are of the most interest uh, to you based on what you learned in the program. With the obvious goal being to get hired. And when I say get hired here, I'm talking about two different specific types of role, a security analyst uh, and a penetration tester, which we'll, again, we'll talk more about momentarily. So let's get into the curriculum, the specific uh, deep dive into the curriculum. Now, what I want to do here is show you something called a course poster. So in InfoSec, um, course posters are pretty standard, right? So if you're thinking about taking a course or a program, oftentimes that program will have a course poster, which is just quite simply a poster sized infographic, um, which shows you know, what, the pro what you'll learn in the program, the sequence uh, that you'll learn the things, why you'll learn different topics, how they all sort of interrelate to each other, and then what are the target outcomes when you finish uh, the program. And so we're going to take a look at the course poster for Full Stack Cyber Bootcamp. So let me um, switch uh, apps here. Okay, so this is the course poster. Um, you're not, this is the bird's eye view. Uh, you're not, the text is going to be a little too small for you right now to read. Don't worry, I'm going to zoom into each section as we go through it. Um, but this is the, the bird's eye view. So what we're going to do is walk through the student journey from the very beginning, taking Hacking 101, the admissions process, and then going through the program week by week, and then the expected outcomes. So let's start up here in the top uh, corner. So ha first, take Hacking 101, as I talked about, free six-hour online course. And actually, one of the key goals of Hacking 101 is to really capture your imagination um, about what's happening in uh, cyberspace and hopefully sort of inspire you to pursue a career uh, in this field. Uh, so that's Hacking 101. The next step is you apply uh, to join, to, to go through the boot camp. And you'll have, as, as part of the application process, there are a few different things. One is you fill in the application. Uh, the next step is um, you take an admissions exam, right? So I often get asked, do I need to have any specific technical skills uh, or cybersecurity skills to get into this program? And the answer is no, you don't. Um, however, you, you do need to be able to, to think, well, like it says here, we're testing for logical reasoning and the ability to solve puzzles. No specific technical skills are required. So you can think of the admissions exam as like a series of like um, math brain teasers, okay? So here's an example question. Consider these numbers, four, okay, you see an array of numbers here, which does not belong. Okay, so you may look at these numbers and, and go, oh, all right, this one, this one's odd, the others are even. Um, so this is a relatively easy question. Now here's another one. If dad equals 18, fish equals 84, and feet equals 40, what is the value of beach? Now this answer may not immediately leap out at you. Um, but if you spend a minute or two thinking about this and trying to figure out, well, what is going on here? Is there some sort of an algorithm under here? Um, chances are you'll be able to get to the answer in a, in a minute or two. So these, these are the types of questions that are on the admissions exam. And that's what we need to see, be able to sort of think logically through these types of uh, problems. Um, so if you, if you pass the admissions exam, well, um, then uh, there's an interview process. And then if you get accepted, before you start the program, we'll ask you to sign something called our, our, our White Hat Manifesto. It's our ethical code of conduct. And the reason for that is, you know, we're not, uh, this program is unique in the sense that the things that we're teaching can be used for nefarious purposes, right? And, and so we want to make sure that we're training white hats and, and not black hats. And, and a part of that, um, the way we do that is by asking our students to start, sign our ethical code of conduct before they begin the program, the White Hat Manifesto. Okay, so I will zoom back out here. Um, so uh, once you get in, accepted in the program, then you will begin foundations. Okay, that's that four week uh, pre-work course. And during foundations, you're learning basic security and networking concepts, how to work in the command line. Um, so many of you may have never worked in the command line. And when you're working in cybersecurity, you'll spend a lot of time working in the, in the command line. So you'll start doing that. Uh, in foundations and start getting comfortable working in the command line. Um, and you'll also learn the basics of Python, very basics, very high level uh, introductory concepts uh, in Python. So like I mentioned, it's a part-time online course, about 25 hours per week for four weeks that you take at home. And then once you pass foundations, you're ready to start the bootcamp. And, and the reason for foundations is we want to make, you know, the, the actual bootcamp program, it moves pretty quickly um, and it's academically quite rigorous. And so we want to make sure everybody's starting at the same level with these base level uh, skills before they begin the boot camp. 
So spe the specific things we're going into in foundations are first of all, computing and networking basics, um, right? So in networking, there's, there's a lot of different uh, material that we could cover, but we're zooming in on the things that are just mostly specific to InfoSec to cybersecurity. Uh, and specifically, we're talking about something called the OSI model. There's seven different layers of the OSI model. We'll go deep into every one and, uh, and learn the different aspects of them. Um, then you go into security basics, like learning uh, basic concepts like uh, crypto cryptography, um, not cryptocurrency, cryptography. Uh, learn the difference between a, a threat and a vulnerability and some other basic concepts. And then you'll get into, you'll start working in Linux. You'll have a virtual machine running on your Mac or on your uh, Windows uh, laptop, um, and you'll install a Linux virtual machine and start working there in Linux in the command line. Um, and then, like I said, you'll do a, a high level um, intro into Python, uh, very basic base, very uh, basic things like data types, control flow, and you'll, under, you'll learn what functions are. Okay, so as we go through the course poster, you'll see there's a row here called tools you'll learn. And one thing I want to emphasize here is that this program, it's very hands on, it's very sort of tactical, you're learning, you're spending most of your time, hands on keyboard working through things. And, and so for example, in foundations, you're already starting to work in the command line, you're installing your first uh, VM through a, something called a hypervisor called VirtualBox. You're starting to work in Kali Linux. Kali Linux is the version of Linux that's most commonly used in cybersecurity. And again, you're learning basic, basic Python. Um, so once you go through foundations, there is a checkpoint. Um, so you do need to pass the checkpoint um, to move into the boot camp. Um, if you don't pass the checkpoint, um, that's okay. You can go and replay foundations again. And then once you pass, uh, foundations, the you know the checkpoint, then you'll be able to move into the uh, boot camp. But most of our students do pass uh, the foundations checkpoint. Okay, so then we begin um, the the actual boot camp. So let me zoom back out here again, and you can see at a very high level. So we're going to go weeks one through thirteen here. Okay, and you can see there's some red stuff and there's some blue stuff here. Now in in cybersecurity, um, we have a notion of something called red team and blue team, right? So red team is offense and blue team is defense. Now, uh, when you look at the three and a half million open cyber jobs within two years, most of those are on the blue team, right? Which makes sense because you know, you're talking about defending organizations. Um, but our philosophy, our academic philosophy, and it's shared by a lot of practitioners in this space, is that you should really learn offense before you learn defense. So in other words, you wanna develop something called the, the security mindset, right? If you know how to attack, um, then you'll be a better defender against those attacks, those attacks. And so what we're doing at the beginning of the program is teaching red teams what we call certified, what we call ethical hacking. Okay, um, so let's start zooming into that. But before we get into the red team, we have something called two weeks of what we call security essentials. So in security essentials, at this point, you're on campus, right, with your cohort of students. Um, in security essentials, you're going deeper into the command line, getting more comfortable with it. Uh, as well as networking and with Python, and you'll start doing something called scripting using something called bash scripting. Um, so deeper into Linux, um, you're working on the command line, uh, not only in Linux, but also in Windows, uh, more practical networking work um, specific to InfoSec, a little bit of bash scripting, and then we'll go deeper into Python for security. Um, so you can, you know, the reason we use Python um, is so you can automate routine tasks, um, like brute forcing a password, uh, for example, or going through a log file and extracting different, you know, important bits from a giant log file, um, we call parsing a log file. So those, these are common things that you do in InfoSec and you use Python to automate that and to, and to make it, uh, make your work go more quickly. And again, here are the tools that you'll learn. Um, a lot of these will look like jargon to you at this point, and that's okay. Um, but these are the types of things you're, you'd be learning in security essentials. Now let's get into the red team. So red team, we spend four weeks and it's pretty intense, right? Uh, and by the way, um, you can see training to be a, so here in red team, you're training to be a penetration tester and a blue team, blue team, you're training to be a security analyst. So penetration tester, if you're not familiar with that role in InfoSec, it's a, essentially an, uh, an ethical hacker, right? So oftentimes companies will hire other companies to, pen to quote unquote penetration, try and penetrate, 
penetration test their company, right? They'll try to break in uh, to the company that hired them to find vulnerabilities. So the company can then patch them, right? So uh, sometimes, and a matter of fact, a lot of large companies, large finance companies, they're legally mandated. They have to pen test themselves once a year, I think it is. Um, and so, uh, it, so sometimes these companies will hire a, a pen testing firm, or sometimes they'll have pen testers on staff um, who, who routinely penetration test the different systems. Um, okay, so in penetration testing, you're going to learn advanced ethical hacking skills by working through offensive securities penetration testing with Kali Linux, PWK, which is the official prep course for the OSCP exam. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, let me talk about offensive security. So if you're not familiar with a company called Offensive Security, um, they are pretty respected in, in the space. They, for example, they run the Kali Linux project. OK, um, but they also are behind um, the OSCP certification. And if you're not familiar with the OSCP certification, it's I think of it is like um, for red teamers. If you have the OSCP, it's like being a Navy SEAL. It's, it's like um, the most respected certification in this world. It's a very difficult certification. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a 24 hour exam. So let me just let that sink in there for a second, a 24 hour exam. And over that period, you have to hack into five different boxes. And most people do not pass the test the first time they take it. Um, oftentimes I have to take it two or three times uh, to pass the test. Um, and there's actually an official prep course for OSCP. It's called Penetration Testing with Kali Linux or PWK. And that course is embedded in weeks three through six of the boot camp. So you're working through PWK. And so during this course, uh, during this part of the course, you're 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 working through all the standard steps in a pen test process. So first of all, you're going to uh, learn how to know um, your target. You're going to get an overview of pen testing and goals, um, and you're going to start doing uh, recon on your target. Then you're going to do a further assessment on your target, where you're going to go from passive recon to active recon. Um, so active recon meaning you're in the command line, you're actually pinging uh, systems. Um, in your target. Um, and then and there's different tools, TTPs, tools, techniques, and, and pr procedures here that you're going to learn. You're going to learn all the most common TTPs for penetration test. So you're already learning the jargon. Um, then you're going to get into exploiting your target. Once you try and get a shell on that machine, how can you, how can you get into that machine and then start pivoting around and, and doing what you, what you need to do. Um, and you want to do something called priv -esc or escalate your privileges. So those are all the main steps. Um, in learning how to do a pen test. And then at the end of this phase, there's a hackathon um, with uh, teams uh, uh, competing against each other um, as you go, uh, you know, to try and hack into a specific box during this hackathon. And you can see again here, um, a, a large number of, of tools, hacking tools that we're teaching in this part of the uh, bootcamp. All right, so let me zoom back out here. Okay, so now you've done your foundations, you've done your security essentials, you've done your red team training. And now we have um, async week. It's actually probably better to call it cert week, right? So this is where during week seven, you're gonna work from home at your own pace. You won't have instructional support this week as we'll be taking one of the certification tracks shown below. Okay, I'll go down here. And here you see there's two tracks, red team track and blue team track. And depending on what track you're on career wise, That'll inform your decision on what cert you want to sit for. Uh, now, don't worry about that now. Um, you won't have a, that'll be a very difficult question for you to answer now. If you want to be red team or blue team, you need to have a little more information, do a little more work to ha have a better sense for what they each mean. Then you can decide what kind of track uh, you want to go on. And you'll, you'll have a sense by the time cert week comes around, you'll have a sense for if you want to go down the red team track and the blue team track. Now, if you want to go down the red team track, then this week we are going to recommend that you sit down for the OSCP. Right, so um, take that 24 uh, hour exam. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the fee for the exam from offensive security is included in the tuition uh, for the program, as is uh, PWK, right? So you can go online to offensive security's website right now and buy PWK, the online version. You won't have instructional support, but you can just buy the online version and it's $800, including sitting for the OSCP one time. Um, so that's included in the cost of tuition, the $800 and the exam sitting. So if you want to go on the red team track, then by all means, we would encourage you to do your first attempt at the OSCP um, during cert week. Um, or more likely, most of our students are on the blue team tracks, and that's where most of the jobs are, um, in which case we're going to recommend you take um, an introductory level uh, certification uh, exam for a cert called Security Plus, which is the most common, commonly seen and requested uh, the 
entry level cert in cyber security. So, all right, so zooming back out here, that's the course poster. So now we're about to start the blue team training, right? Because you've, you've done your red team training, you've started to develop that security mindset, you can think like an adversary, right? So now you can go into defense, defensive mode for a blue team. So for blue team training, you are, for this part of the boot camp, it's less technical, slightly, it is still technical, um, and more about storytelling. So you'll work through various scenarios and simulations that will be similar to what you'll encounter in the real world as a blue teamer at a large company. And so we're basing it around something called the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is very commonly requested by employers in terms of a set of skills. And, and there's basically five buckets within NIST, right? So there's identify threats, protect yourself, detect, respond, and recover. So there's a bunch of different steps here. So for example, in protect, they'll do things like develop and implement appropriate safeguards to ensure delivery of critical services. So answering questions like, how do you secure systems? How do you configure and read logging? What tools and technologies can you leverage? How do you lock down networks, access controls, mobile and cloud? Okay, so you work through all aspects of the NIST cybersecurity framework. Um, and again, you'll see a set of tools here um, that you'll be learning in the blue team phase. Now, as I zoom back out again, you can see at the end of blue team phase that there's a cert down here. And this is your second cert. It's called the CISA, uh, Cybersecurity Analyst uh, Certification. And for the, when you're at this part of the program, it's required to take the CISA exam um, here in week 12 once you finish week 12. And like it says here, having your CISA certification will make it easier and faster to get hired as a security analyst. So you're required to take the CISA exam in week 12 when you have learned all the material. If you don't pass the test, uh, you can opt to try again in flight. Each time you take the exam, CompTIA, which is the organization that administers the exam, will charge you their standard fee of $348. So definitely best to pass uh, the first time if you can to not have to pay uh, twice. Now, just to give you a sense for it, um, you know, we're a new school, right? Um, as you're probably aware, actually, as we talked about just uh, before. So we've had our first cohort of students go through the program. Um, and the first cohort of students was 23 students and 21 of them passed CISA on the first attempt. Uh, so 91% of the students passed CISA and they were in that certification. Okay, so you get, you finish your red team training, you finish your blue team training, now you get into projects week. So there are a few different things that happen here. Um, first of all, there's a SOC battle. Right, so you'll pull together everything you've learned and fight an epic battle against other students in the cyber range. And I can talk more about the cyber range in the Q and A if you're curious. Um, and then there's a capstone project. So this is your final project where you will write a pre presentation on a modern vulnerability. So, you know, as you saw in the course poster, you're going to be exposed to a lot of different concepts, tools, procedures, right? So inevitably, um, some of them will some of them will be more interesting than others. So what you're going to do in your final project is you're going to choose uh, an area that's of most interest to you, whether it's red team or blue team, and then zoom in on a specific vulnerability, build your final project, because the, the next week in what we call launch week, um, you'll work from home that week, but you'll come to the global cyber center. Uh, which I can I'll, I'll describe a little bit later in Chelsea for a couple of events. Okay, so first of all, on launch day, uh, on Tuesday morning, you'll get on stage to present your capstone project in front of a live audience. The event is live streamed on YouTube for employers to watch, for our, our employer partners to watch. Um, so technically, anybody can watch it since it's publicly available on YouTube. But the real audience are the employers um, who are coming to hiring day the next, the following Friday, and this is where. Um, you, you come to hiring day on the morning, you'll attend. Uh, it's basically a speed round of interviews with employers in New York City. So what doesn't happen on hiring day is you won't get a job offer right then, right? But what it is, is it's your first interview with a number of different companies. We're like a, the matchmaker and then hopefully you will continue that conversation with the interviewing uh, process. Okay, um, and so then weeks 14 plus, however long this is, this is flight. We talked about earlier, you uh, talked about that earlier, where you work from home at your own pace and you'll spend about 50% of your time doing job search, about 50% of your time studying to take an advanced certification. Okay, so what we recommend is in flight for, for all graduates, um, whether you're gonna be on the red team or blue team, we recommend taking the CISSP certification. Now, the CISSP is by far the most in-demand blue team certification out there uh, and one of the most respected as well. The challenge is um, 
you need to have five years of experience um, to get the CISSP. But there's a little hack you can do, right? So you can um, take the CISSP, pass it, right? So employers know you have that set of skills that they need on their team pending five years of experience. And they call that a, a associate of ISC. ISC is the organization that administers the CISSP. So you'd be an ISC associate with the CISSP. So that's one advanced certification. Or if you're committed to being on the red team, then we'd recommend during flight, you do your second attempt um, at the OSC page. Usually it doesn't take more than two attempts um, and get the OSCP um, locked down. Okay, so when you graduate then, you're launching your cybersecurity career and here's the market you're going into as we've seen 3 million open jobs, growing quickly, high entry level salary. So that is the course poster. That is the curriculum for Full Stack Cyber Bootcamp. And, and by the way, you can see this, it's always on our website, uh, which is cyber.fullstackacademy.com slash course dash poster. So slash course dash poster. Okay, let's go back into the slides. Okay, so obviously when we began this uh, talk, I talked about we're a little bit crazy about outcomes, AKA getting hired, right? And so as you go through this program, you'll spend a lot of time working on career development aspects related to getting hired. So I'll just read this part here. It's probably the quickest way to get the message across. At Full Stack, we believe knowing how to get a job is just as important as knowing how to do a job. So while our instructors are hard at work building your technical skills, our career success team will be making sure you graduate totally ready for the job search. And even after you graduate, our career counselors will be there to keep you motivated, prepare you for interviews, and even negotiate offers. Here's what our career success team will help you do. So things like build a technical resume. So when I say technical, I mean specifically for a cybersecurity technical practitioner. Optimize your LinkedIn profile. Network within the, in the, within the industry. That's a big part of the puzzle here. Prepare for your behavioral interviews and also your technical interviews. Stay motivated on the job search. Um, craft your cover letters. Uh, correspond with recruiters and negotiate offers. So you'll spend a lot of time as you go through the program, more towards the end of the program, um, and then in flight, working with your career coach in terms of getting hired. Okay. All right, so here is just a quick summary of the full-time program, 17 weeks. It's an analyst and penetration tester uh, boot camp, And so you've seen all the different aspects of it here. Uh, and it's a total of 724 hours, including the time you're in class, um, as well as your uh, homework time uh, at home, right? So that's the full-time program. Now, we also have had a large number of people say, that sounds great, but I have a J-O-B. I have a job and I, I cannot stop taking my, I can't, cannot quit my job to take this program. And so based, sort of based on popular demand, we've just announced a part-time program, okay? So the part-time program, instead of 17 weeks, it's, it's basically essentially the same curriculum, but spread out over 26 weeks. Um, and it's an analyst boot camp. So you're not learning uh, penetration testing as much. Um, it's more of a, the goal of the part-time program is to get hired as a security analyst after you graduate. So when you compare the program side by side, um, you can see that the full-time program is a total of 724 hours Whereas the part-time program is a total of 416 hours. So it's uh, Tuesday and Thursday nights, 6.30 to 9.30. Um, and then Saturdays, uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So a total of uh, 10 hours per week in the classroom. Um, and then for each day of class, there's about two hours of uh, pre-work required for each class. So a total of 416 hours uh, in the part-time program. And we're, we're teaching all of the same things except we're not going as deep in the part-time program into red team. So you can see here, it says red team is 48 hours, whereas in the red team in the full-time program, it's 192 hours. So in the part-time program, we are not teaching PWK, right? So you do not see OSCP here in the part-time program. We're, we're just, uh, so, so we're doing about 25% as much uh, of the material, 25% of the material, but we're still going through all the main TTPs in a penetration test. So you've got a sense for it, you'll work on the most commonly used tools, but you won't go deep enough to take uh, PWK and sit for your OSCP. Um, but the rest of the uh, aspects of the program are, are roughly the same, academically speaking. So full-time program and part-time program. 
All right, let's look at the costs of the numbers. And, and again, um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and post them in chat and we'll go through them at the end of the talk. So uh, cost for the full-time program. So first, Hacking 101, as I mentioned, that's a free course. Uh, the tuition is $17,610. Now you do need a laptop with at least 16 gigs of RAM. So Mac or Windows laptop would be fine as long as you have 16 gigs of RAM. Um, economically speaking, we'd recommend a Windows machine because it's a lot cheaper. If, if you get a MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM, that's gonna cost you about 2,500 bucks um, new. So a much more uh, cost-effective alternative is to buy a Windows machine. And if you just go to like newegg.com, for example, and do a search for laptops, filter with 16 gigs, um, and then rank by uh, lowest price, you'll see a, a wide number of PC laptops for in the five to $700 range. So let's say it's about $600 for the laptop that you'll need for the program. Um, and then there's a course fee of $400 which covers the cost of the program materials um, and one CISA exam voucher. So that $348 exam voucher um, that I mentioned for CISA, it's included in, in that course fee. Giving you a total of $18,610. Now, there are some optional certifications as well. So OSCP, um, attempt number one, like I mentioned, it's included in the tuition. Um, if you Security Plus, if, if you are taking Security Plus during CERT week, that's $339 charged by CompTIA. Um, and then if you do CISSP in flight, that's a $700 certification. So this is for the full-time program. And when you look at a part-time program, it's basically the same, except for the tuition is about $1,500 uh, cheaper in the part-time program, giving your total cost here out of pocket about $17,000. Now, in terms of putting these numbers into context, um, what I would recommend you do is, let's, let's say you're looking at the full-time program, look at what you're expecting to spend um, and then what you're expecting to get in return. You know, what is the ROI um, from that in, investment? Now, this isn't a, a exactly like for like. It's not like you're saying, all right, I get this and then I get $85,000 in my pocket, right? But what you get is you're, you're spending this, you're investing this much, um, and this is what you're hoping to get the, the hope for outcome when you graduate um, from the program. Now, in terms of actually paying for the tuition, we are partnered with an organization called Skills Fund, which you may have heard of. They partner with boot camps like Fullstack um, to help students pay for their uh, boot camp tuition. And so, actually, most of the students who go through Fullstack um, use uh, Skills Fund. And basically, what they do is they pay your tuition and then they give you a loan for the amount that they paid. And it usually comes out to about $400 a month for five years. And what um, a lot of students will do is they'll set up their loan from skills fund so that it doesn't start until about, so payments don't start until about three months after you graduate um, and, and to give you time to get hired and get that new salary uh, coming in. Now, one interesting thing about the cyber program is you can include, um, so you can take a loan for this, for whatever the amount of your tuition is, um, but you can also include additional fees in terms of a cost of living allowance up to $6,500. So that could be to cover things like your rent uh, while you're in the program, rent and groceries, essential things. Also, you could use it to cover your laptop and your course fee. You don't have to do this, but it is an option in your loan with Skills Fund. Um, so that's that's skills. So, so that's how much the program costs and how students typically pay for it through Skills Fund. Now, in terms of the next available cohort dates. Um, the next program start in terms of foundations is December 9th, and the application deadline for that is November 25th. And in terms of the part-time program, uh, the actually the first part-time program starts uh, February 4th. Um, application deadline is January 20th. Now I talked earlier about uh, our ethical code of conduct. I just wanna quickly touch on this a little bit more. It is a really important part of the overall e equation. And basically, the, the ethical code of conduct looks like this. It's really simple. Um, as a hacker, there's things that I will do and I won't do. So things I will do, be honorable, be responsible, be reliable, treat pe people fairly and with respect, respect people's privacy and the privacy of organizations that I work for, keep my skills and knowledge current through lifelong learning, be active in the InfoSec community and give back, build projects and be willing to share what I learn, uh, submit only original and authentic work, and inspire and support aspiring hackers that come behind me. Things that I won't do, be an asshole, be disrespectful, be deceitful, 
do things that are illegal, make any misleading or false representations to my peers, raise unnecessary alarm, or give unwarranted comfort, sadly, in this day and age, um, disclose any confidential information without the specific consent of the owner, and work in InfoSec just for the money. Um, this is kind of an important one. You know, I always tell people, yes, if you go into this field, chances are you will get paid quite well, but that should not be your primary motivation, okay? Um, and then we sum it up down here. I will do what I can to help make the world a safer place. I promise to only hack hardware, software, and or networks in ways that are consistent with the values above. In resolving any conflicts, I will first consider public safety, then duties to individuals, then duties to the profession. So this is the White Hat Manifesto, and this is what we'll ask you to sign um, before you, uh, before day one in the boot camp. Okay, I want to talk for a minute about something called Cyber NYC, which you may have heard of. If, if you haven't, it's a hundred million dollar public-private investment um, that New York City is making, the government of New York City is making, to turn New York City into Think of it as like they, they want to turn New York City into like the Silicon Valley of cybersecurity. And part and parcel to that is they want to create 10,000 jobs for cybersecurity jobs in the years ahead for New Yorkers. Now, there's different work streams um, involved in Cyber NYC. It's a pretty big project. So I don't have time to go into all of it. Um, suffice it to say that one of the work streams is the cybersecurity boot camp. Um, and that's where that's where full stack comes into the uh, equation. Now, Cyber NYC has been covered pretty widely in the press. So um, if you go to our website and just go to the, the press page, um, you'll see a bunch of articles. So for example, New York Times, a plan to turn New York into a capital of cybersecurity. Uh, TechCrunch, New York City wants to build a cyber army. So um, I encourage you to read these articles. There's some really, really interesting uh, coverage of the Cyber NYC project. And since it's government, there are, there are politicians involved as well. So for example, here's a quote from City Councilman Paul Vallone. In the 21st century era, continuously finding new and innovative ways to rise and meet the challenges that cybersecurity threats present to society is critical. Full Stack Cyber Boot Camp will train, certify, and prepare New York City's next generation of cybersecurity professionals and launch them into highly in-demand and vital cybersecurity careers, making our city more prepared to inventively face the challenges of tomorrow. And here's a quote from uh, oh, James Patchett, who runs New York City Economic Development Corporation, EDC is proud to support the launch of Full Stack Cyber Bootcamp. The rapid rise of cybersecurity has created vast opportunities and in-demand jobs within the industry. Full Stack Cyber Bootcamp promises to train students of today to fill the jobs of tomorrow in this burgeoning sector. So there's also um, a curriculum advisory board within Cyber NYC. So the curriculum that I just, we just walked through, we didn't uh, build that in a vacuum, right? In fact, the first thing we did is we got out of the building. We spent a year designing the curriculum and building the related content. And the first thing we did is we went out to companies like Google and Microsoft and Goldman Sachs, and we talked to the executive leaders, usually at the CISO, Chief Information Security Officer level, and said, hey, what do you, we know you need people, we know you need cyber talent, but what are the specific skills that you need them to have to be hireable so they can hit the ground running on your team? Um, and so we've got an incredible uh, advisory board who have helped us uh, design the curriculum, and you can see some of the, uh, some of the companies in the advisory board listed here. Also, some program partners, um, companies who have made a substantial investment in, in Cyber NYC, including Goldman Sachs, uh, PwC, uh, and some others as well. So we've talked about the big picture, what's happening in cyberspace. We talked about why this is creating a huge opportunity for people going into this field. We have a quick overview of the curriculum and we then did a deep dive into the curriculum. So before we open it up for Q and A, um, let's uh, just talk about next steps here. If, you're, if this has piqued your interest in potentially uh, taking this program. So what is it they say? Every great journey begins with a single step. I guess your first step was coming to this uh, info session. The next step is, is, as I laid out in the journey, taking Hacking 101. So it's very simple. Just go to the website, cyber.fullstackacademy.com, click on the prepare button, uh, click on Hacking 101, and then you'll see it here, just fill in the form, and then you'll be able to start the course instantly. Then once you've finished the course, if a couple things have happened, right? If the world of cybersecurity has captured your imagination, remember I mentioned earlier, that's the point of this course, Hacking 101, and you think it would be a fun career path with a good income potential. And I really emphasize fun because this field is not for everyone, right? So you may get into hacking one-on-one and say, nah, nope, 
not interested in, in working in the command line or whatever it may be. And that's okay. This isn't for everyone. But if you, if, if you get in and you, and you get excited, you kind of geek out on this stuff um, and you feel like there would be good income path for you, then I would encourage you to apply to get into the boot camp. All right. So that's it on next steps. And with that, I will open it up for the Q&A. So let me pull up the chat here. Okay, let's see. Question from Dragon W. How much uh, for this course, any idea? Okay, so we, I think we answered that question. We probably posted that earlier in the talk. So it's about 17,000 for the full-time program, about 18,000 when you add in the course fee and the uh, cost for the laptop. Question from Julia. Can people in the part-time course get access to the additional resources on Red Team that the full-time program has access to? I like this question. Um, uh, well, <laughs> here's how I would answer that question. If, for, first of all, some people would say, all right, how do I, how do I know what to do? Should I take the full-time program or the part-time program? And the answer to that, the easy answer to that is to say, if you have a job, I would take the part-time program. If you don't, I would look at the full-time. Uh, program. I wouldn't base it on if I want to be red team or blue team because that is not really an answerable question for you until you've gone through hacking 101 until you've gone through the beginning of, of the program. Now let's say you go through the part-time program and you realize oh actually this red team stuff is really cool I want to go deeper into that then what I would recommend is after you finish the program the part-time program then go and take PWK afterwards. So you, like I mentioned, you can go on um, Offensive Security's website, you can buy PWK um, and 30 days of lab time because there's a bunch of virtual labs that you need to work through um, for $800. So, so I, I would hold fire on that until you finish the, the part-time program and you know if you want to go deeper into the red team. Okay. Um, thanks for the salary stats on average uh, averages across the nation. Do you have any stats specific to New York City, San Francisco, or San Francisco? or suggest a resource where we can find this info. Yeah, I like that one too. Yes, definitely. So matter of fact, the numbers that I showed you are for um, New York City, but let me, um, bear with me one second. I'm going to share my screen. First, let me get into Chrome and I'm gonna share my screen here. And I'm gonna go to a site, um, CyberSeek that I mentioned before. So it's just, uh, cyberseek.org and you go into career pathway up here um, and this is a really cool site right so you can you have um, entry level mid-level and advanced level roles so for example um, we were looking at cybersecurity analyst and you can see here um, when I mouse over it it says the number of job openings and the average salary and then you can click on it and it pulls up a bunch of related data uh, below um, so here's cybersecurity consultant um, it's more advanced roles. Okay. Um, so the numbers we looked at before are from CyberSeek. Um, and I think there's a way to filter based on location. It's not leaping out of me right now. Um, but definitely whenever you want to look at um, cyber security salary data, just go to cyberseek.org. It's a great site and a great UI. Okay. Question from Jesse. What percentage of students actually get hired after the program? Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, we, we just had our first cohort um, go through. They graduated about a month ago. The second cohort is in the room uh, next to me right now. So we don't have, we haven't published outcomes data. We won't publish the first set of outcomes data until 180 days after they graduate. Um, I can tell you that uh, a number of them have already been hired by organizations like Accenture, uh, Major League Baseball, uh, New York City. Um, so not all of them have been hired, but a number of them have been hired already. Um, and one thing I do want to say is that um, we as a, so we're, uh, as a school, we're licensed by New York State, an or, uh, agency called BPSS, right? So they license us and there's rules and regulations we need to follow. And one of those rules is we're not allowed to make guarantees, right? So we cannot say, go through this program and, we would and you will get hired, you will get a job, right? What I can tell you is the ambitious goals that we've set with New York City. Our goal is that um, we wanna see 95% of our graduates get hired within three months after graduation. So uh, again, we don't make any promises, but that's the goal. And everything that we're doing for this program is sort of rallying around that, that goal, begin with an ending in mind, right? Okay, um, next question from Dragon Warrior. Um, will we get labs here? 
Yes. So as you, that's, that's what's interesting. You know, when you look at learning, for example, cybersecurity versus coding, they're both great paths, right? Uh, in coding, um, you're building stuff and that's great. And you're writing code and an IDE, a, a code editor. Um, so you don't need, you don't have the notion of labs, but in cybersecurity, you have labs. That's a big part of the equation. And so um, as you go through full stack cyber bootcamp, there are two main labs platforms you'll work on. Um, one is PWK, right? So offensive security, they've got an online lab. It's 50 boxes, 50 machines, um, each one being a lab, and you need to hack into each one of those boxes over the network, right? So PWK, the offensive security labs, and in terms of red team, they're really regarded as like the most, um, I, I would say the leading labs for red team training. Then we also have, Fullstack also has our own lab, which is called cyberlab.fullstackacademy.com. And so as you work through the course, um, especially in red team and security essentials and blue team, uh, when you learn a concept, then you'll go into the lab and you'll work through different challenges. And there's a leaderboard. Um, it's a, a lot of the, matter of fact, a, a lot of the curriculum and a lot of the experience in full stack cyber bootcamp is gamified, as they say. Um, and labs are a part of that, including the leaderboard related to the labs. Um, so yeah, uh, PWK, offensive security is PWK labs and for the full-time program and cyber labs, which is our own labs that students work through. Uh, from Jess, I've seen that New York City has a way for residents to attend the program for free. Does full stack have any plans to include residents from New Jersey um, too, or would that be up to the state? Um, unfortunately, no, not in New Jersey. Since this is a new, this program is funded in, in part by the state of New York and the city of New York. Um, they're looking to, they are doing, they are giving a number of 100% scholarships to students, but unfortunately they're just for New Yorkers. You have to live in the five boroughs. Um, question from Julia. Is there opportunity to do some of these classes remote? Uh, if you cannot be in town for a few of the classes, um, not at the moment, um, but I uh, probably in Q2 or Q3 of 2020, uh, we will probably have an online only offering through one of our, we've got some university partners um, that we work with, for example, University of San Diego out on the West Coast. Um, they have just launched uh, a, an almost exclusively online program, except it is live, it's online, it's on West Coast hours though, so it's really probably not gonna be too good for people who are in uh, uh, on East Coast time. Um, but probably around Q2, Q2 or Q3, we'll have a completely online program um, available. Okay, here's another question from Dragon Warrior. So after, we've, uh, after this course, will we be able to crack or will we be eligible to attempt PWK or OSCP? Uh, yes, so um, here's how I would answer that. When you start the red team phase, right? So as part, in the full-time program, um, you will get 30 days of lab access to PWK. And you'll start working on that when you start that four week red team uh, phase. So you'll start working through PWK's 50 boxes that I mentioned um, before. And, and it's fun because, you know, we have all the students are on a Slack channel and whenever they get root, we call it getting root on a box. Basically when you hack into a box, they're like, I got root on and all the machines have names like Mike or Bob. And you know, so people get really excited. I got root on Bob. And so people kind of clap for each other. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's not, it's, it's not easy. Um, but it's, it's very satisfying when, when you get into these um, boxes. Um, yes. So when you go through the program, um, everybody, when you get your 30 day lab access for the red team phase, everybody will sign up for OSCP. However, you will not decide, if you're gonna take OSCP um, until about the week before, when you see how comfortable you're, you're feeling with the material, if you're ready to take a 24 hour exam, um, and then if you're gonna sit for the, uh, for the exam. So we, it's, it's optional, we leave it up to the students. I, I will tell you that in um, our current the second cohort that's going through the program now, they're all feeling quite confident, which is great. Um, and all of them are taking the OSCP uh, during cert week. So I hope that, hope that answers your question, Dragon Warrior. By the way, that's a cool hacker name. And you're gonna need one of those before you start the program. Okay, another question from Julia. How many females have you had in your past cohorts? This is a great question. All right, and this is a big topic, okay? Okay, when, when you look at tech overall, okay, 25% um, of the people who work in tech are female, right? Pretty bad. But when you look at security, cybersecurity, 
of the people who work in InfoSec are female. It's terrible. It's terrible. And we as an industry need to do better, right? And we're super focused on that. So I mentioned before, if you if you were here at the beginning of the talk, we started an all-female coding program. That's on the coding side called, called Grace Hopper. Um, and through that program, it took us a few years, but we were able to get full stack to where it is today, where overall we have what we call gender parity. In fact, we have more female students than we have male students in full stack overall. But we have our work cut out for us in cybersecurity, and we're trying to do everything we can to encourage um, non-white males, okay, to go into this field, right? We, we work very closely with the LGBT uh, community, um, but it's no, uh, you know, there's different scholarships uh, available. There's no magic wand we can wave. I, I think a key part of that is um, just getting the message out there and, and saying to, to non-white males, hey, this is an interesting field. It's important. You'll get paid well. Check it out, right? So we need to drive awareness. We need to inspire people. Um, but we also need to create a safe culture, right? So when people arrive here on campus, it's safe for everybody. And, and we really spend a lot of time on that. Matter of fact, um, we've got a, a set of values um, that we, we sort of live by here at Full Stack, and one of them is quite simply no assholes, right? We don't want people being aggressive, rude, no matter what gender or sex or, you know, whatever you may be, we just want people to be nice to each other and to take that out into the community when they leave the, the program. So it's gender, gender uh, so diversity is, is a hugely important topic, and we spend a lot of time uh, thinking on that. Uh, oh, and, and to answer your question, I think in the first cohort, um, we had 23 students start and I think nine were female. So that's already better than the industry average, um, but, but we need to do better. We need to do better. Uh, okay, another question from Dragon Warrior. Do you know, are there any job openings in India or scope of um, cybersecurity in India? Um, well, it's interesting. If, if you look at the, um, matter of fact, let me share my screen again here. And let me go back to, um, this slide. Okay, so you can see the breakdown of 3 million open jobs and you can see in Asia, right? Now this is all of, all of Asia, right? Most of the jobs are in Asia, 2.1 million of the jobs are in that part of uh, the world. So I don't have numbers break down specifically to uh, India, but I think what's really interesting about this particular field is the skills are transferable, right? So if you, learn in one country, you could go to another country and people will need those skills. Question from Jesse. I've talked to some cybersecurity professionals and they stress that companies focus a lot on experience when hiring. Is the program really that competitive or are there other resources we can access to gain that experience faster after graduating or have projects in the program to show on our resumes? Yeah, okay, so this is another topic we spend a, a lot of time working on and, and talking about. So this, this question of, you know, there's so many open jobs, but then a lot of the employers say they want experienced people. And that is true to a degree, right? What I would say is that full stack in, in New York City, we're not just doing this on our own, we're doing it with the employer partners and, and creating programs that make it easy for them to hire our entry level um, graduates. Um, so, for example, we're working very closely with New York City Cyber Command, and I'll paint a picture for you, okay? So, New York City Cyber Command, if you haven't heard of it, it's an organization, their mission is to protect New York City from cyber attacks, okay? That's a huge mission. That's, that's eight, New York City's 8 million residents. That's 100 different agencies, including police department, fire department. Board of Education, right? New York City has a million different computer systems, okay? Um, uh, 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 some of them going back to the 60s, okay? So it's a very big, very complex task. And so they have something called a Security Operations Center or a SOC, which is open 24-7, uh, uh, 365, right? So all year, every day. And they need a large number of talent, what I would describe as well-rounded security analysts to man the, the SOC, to, to staff uh, the SOC. And so what we're doing with um, our industry partners is we're saying, look, I know there's a general trend sometimes where you say you, you need uh, you know, people with experience, but you should also look at this method where students are coming out and they've got, it's, it's very rare when you have students who have both red team and blue team experience. It's a rare, uh, a rare combination. So our, the, our graduates are, 
Um, you know, they're going for entry level jobs initially, but they're very well qualified in terms of the skills that they have. And that's why oftentimes we think they'll go for mid-level uh, positions. Um, and in terms of your, your question about have projects uh, in the program to show on a resume is absolutely. So, right, so that capstone project that I talked about at the end of the curriculum, not only will you have a project that'll live on GitHub, right, which is a platform you'll use in this program, but you'll also have a video to put on your LinkedIn profile of you on stage. It's almost like being on stage at like DEF CON and giving a, a technical talk where you're on stage um, and you're showing the proof of concept that you built hands on keyboard walking through it. And so you're on stage looking confident, looking, uh, talking articulately about infosec related topics. Um, and that's on your LinkedIn profile. And so there's all sorts of different little projects and different things that we, we baked into the program um, to, to make our students as hireable as possible. And also we're working with uh, the companies. You know, we've got staff uh, on our career success team, staff that you would work with your career success coach. And then we have also have staff who work externally with the companies, the employers in New York City, government and industry, government and industry, letting them know, hey, there's a steady stream of cyber talent coming out of this new school and making introductions. Okay, another question. I was not present during the first 30 minutes, so I don't know if this is covered. We'll be dealing with system level coding programming or we'll be focusing on networking stuff. Um, so we did cover that. Um, for that, we're, we're covering um, basic programming concepts, right? Enough for you to be dangerous, for lack of a better word. So we're covering very high level uh, Python concepts and also going in, into scripting, something called bash scripting. But definitely check out the course poster, um, which goes into more detail on that. So that's at cyber.fullstackacademy.com slash course dash poster. Okay, I think we're just about out of time here. So I guess I'll say last call for any more questions. Hacker, Hacker 101 it is then, <laughs> good. Last call, any more questions, Sharon? Hello, Sherry. Okay, then why don't we wrap up here? Um, I appreciate you making some time to come to this session. And, um, oh, one last question, Saturday class, suppose I can't make it. Um, you, you do need, you know, it, uh, so, so we're certified by New York State. And so as part of that, we have to ha take attendance. And so I think it's okay to miss a class or two, but if you're going to miss more than that, um, it's going to be tough for you to, for you to meet the attendance requirements and also keep up since the, the course does move um, so quickly. Oh, one more question. Will this be live classes? Yep. So foundations, no, right? So the first four weeks the online pre-work that you do that online at your own pace, but when you're in the boot camp, they're all live classes. And our campus is in uh, the financial district, lower Manhattan. If I miss one, uh, same, same thing. Um, I, I can't remember how many classes you can make and miss in the full-time program. It's a small number. It's a small number. So for example, like if you have a vacation plan for like a week in the middle of a cohort, then I wouldn't do that cohort. I would wait until the next cohort. And we take attendance automatically every day when you log into our Wi-Fi hotspot on campus. It just logs your attendance. Okay, I think I've worked through all of the questions. So uh, again, we'll, we'll email you out a replay of this video um, in case you have any other questions or you can email cyber-admissions at fullstackacademy.com. And if you're interested, yeah, I would just recommend taking uh, Hacking 101 and check it out. Okay, thanks guys.